Hi, everyone. Here we are. So if there's background noise, go ahead and mute yourself. But otherwise, I think we can stay unmuted. That's, that's up to you. So uh, we, we can start with anything that feels alive for you about this topic. And I usually start just to model, so I will do that. So the speaker speaks for up to five minutes. I'm gonna play the role of timekeeper as well this time, which I haven't done before, so um, bear with me here. Unless you, Bill, you're pretty good at this. Are you, are you okay with doing the timer thing? I, I guess I should ask that. Uh, no, yeah, I'm fine with it. Let me, I just have to go get my iPhone. Are you prepared? Okay. I can do that also. Okay. I'm just thinking I, I don't want to be multitasking too Distracted. much. Distracted, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although I did just now, and Edwin showed his five minutes, I, I made myself a little sign there. But uh, maybe if the speaker doesn't seem to notice when Bill holds up his phone, because that's what he usually does, I'll back him up. And you might see this on my screen. But we're not like super strict about the time. If you're in the middle of saying something, of course, keep you know speaking until you feel complete. Okay, so I will, um, I'm, I'm gonna ask Andre, that's how you say your name. Is that how you say your name? Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Andre. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, I'd like you to be my listener, Andre. Do you understand what the listener does? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Very good. All right. So um, I said earlier that uh, I'm pro choice on this theme. Um, however, I mean, I'm, I'm a person who follows um, the teachings, the deep teachings of Jesus Christ, even though I'm not a biblical person so much in terms of strict interpretation. I'm certainly not a fundamentalist. Um, so it really hurts my heart when people fall out of relationship with one another, because I truly, deep, deep in my soul, I'm person who believes that if we could just find a way to love one another, like that's my deepest political affiliation. So when I think of this pro-choice, pro-life theme, the biggest thing that brings me pain is just the, the polarization. And although I am definitely pro-choice uh, in terms of our laws, that our laws need to um, honor the woman's right to choose whether she's gonna be a mother or not. I'm definitely pro-choice. And any laws that punish the woman, uh, like right now they're in Alabama, I think they're talking about very, very strict penalties for a woman who gets an abortion. And that, that creates great uh, fear inside of me about are we going you know, what are we going back to um so that's you know that's a real concern of mine okay, but well, actually at this point because oh, I don't yes. i'm sorry i i forgot to, i got going there thank you andre and I, I uh, uh I, i'm afraid i'm not going to cover everything so. okay i did get going i, was, I didn't okay. model that very well so thank you yeah. okay okay so what you were saying is that you are a believer in Jesus Christ and his teachings, but you have some problem with so-called fundamentalists. And uh, I don't think we're gonna go into that because it's a, a deep conversation that gonna sidetrack us here. But anyways, that's what you conveyed, right? And also I heard that you said that um, your main, agenda, if you will, is not to lose uh, love between people, regardless of their affiliations with ideas or uh, 
political or any other points, in particular affiliations with uh, um, being pro-choice or pro-life, and that's main thing for you. Also, I heard that you are very much concerned about some movements uh, in, in, in some states, I think you mentioned Alabama, that they um, are planning, or already, I'm not sure because I'm not following that, uh, whether they are um, only imposing some uh, uh, logistical um, means or rules, basically, a law that can severely punish a woman who uh, performs an abortion. Uh, it sounds strange to me because uh, uh, I think uh, that also should involve doctors who perform uh, the okay, operation. Just a minute. Now, just to be um, so with the process, uh -huh. Andre. You, I, I know what I did wrong. When you're the <laughs> listener, when you're the listener, yeah, yeah sorry, you don't get to sorry. say that when that's your turn. It's my first uh, try, so no, please forgive me. Good. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to hear what you were going to say yeah. there, and yet I, as the facilitator, I need to keep listening. Yeah, yeah, I should not react. Uh, I only have to reflect, <laughs> and that's that's why I'm here because I want to learn that. I really am fascinating with the methods. So <laughs> thank okay. you. You did a beautiful uh, so, job. <laughs> this is what I captured, uh, and I, I think I didn't forget anything. You, you, yeah, you. I feel, I feel heard there. So um, I'll go on if I have a little more time. And okay. as I said, I really. Um, okay, so the last thing I oh. would say. Oh. Uh, we'll show the dude. <laughs> maybe I'll just stop right there, okay? Because I think that's a that's a good stopping place. So um, now you're Andre. You're the next. Speaker. Uh, okay, and um, uh, uh, I, do I have to pick up the listener? You pick, yeah, you pick who's going to be your reflective listener. Uh, um, well, I can pick uh, Bill because sure. maybe it doesn't matter, but I'll pick Bill. Okay. Sure. So um, uh, I'm I just, uh, I think personally that, that, as I mentioned in my introduction, that uh, consensus between pro-life and pro-choice people um, rarely, if ever, can be uh, achieved. Uh, however, I'm surprised that what I heard from from you and from another lady who is not in this group, she was um, uh, she's in a different group right now. She mentioned that she's atheist. And she is, however, she became, she converted into pro-life team, a group. Um, um, I think personally that the discussion about the abortion is normally um, completely hopeless between people who made their choice to what group to belong. Because they have own convictions and, uh, and reasons to be... Uh, to belong to, to one or another group. However, uh, I think that the uh, normally discussion comes to the legalizing it, not the issue of performing it. Like uh, Susan, right? You, you, you mentioned that your biggest concern that makes you uh, pro-choice is that women can be uh, penalized or uh, penalized, yes, because if she decides to do it, and that's why you, you are pro-choice. Um, so at that level, I think it's pretty shallow because even though there definitely is um, concern how a law should be applied to this very complicated issue. Um, so that's 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 uh, my point of view at this point. So, Bill, you want to reflect? Sure, sure. So, uh, at first of all, um, you you restated how um, you're kind of. Um, very fascinated by the process and you don't know whether uh, people who are on different sides of this particular issue, whether dialogue would be helpful because they've already kind of made up their minds. And uh, also you mentioned that uh, you were surprised 
uh, both at Susan uh, talking about Jesus Christ as being sort of like a, a mentor or a teacher, and also the other woman, I believe, Teresa, who was pretty, you know, uh, progressive left wing, but had then also gone over to the pro-life side. And so those are things that you found that were unexpected and also kind of contradicted your view about how people are just kind of, you know, set in cement in one way or the other. The other issue you also brought up was the fact that when Susan talked about concern about uh, new laws um, punishing the woman, uh, you also felt that that was somewhat shallow in the sense that there are a whole bunch of other people who were involved, including you mentioned before the doctor and things like that, and that they should be included in the mix. Did I miss anything? No, I, I've been hurt, uh, but I would like to continue a little bit, if I may. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. You have time. So, I think uh, zooming in on the legal issue kind of lift, uh, kind of uh, neglects the, mo the most important thing because, yeah, we can, uh, people normally argue about that. That becomes mm -hmm. the, the conversation, um, whether other people have rights to allow or to disallow the abortion. But the discussion of the abortion itself kind of uh, being left alone by itself, the nature of the abortion, what it, what it is. And um, uh, what, the reason I'm surprised that people who uh, don't deny uh, the idea of a creator and the mystery of life can uh, be lenient towards the um, uh, elimination of life. So that's, in my view, is, um, uh, can be only uh, based on not really deep understanding of that part of the issue. It's kind of manifests to me the uh, ne neglect of the main core of that of that of the what is abortion is that is that uh, act of denying uh, life as a as an act of mystery of creator or or is it something else or is it just we don't want to talk about it? We want to talk about only what would be the social, um, uh, legal ramifications of taking one side or another. And this type of conversation will be uh, endless. It never will come because it's it's complicated. There mm -hmm. are cases when women has indeed has to protect her life because it's a choice between her life and the life of the infant. And it's understood, and that, that's when decision is very difficult. However, I know examples from my personal life when uh, a couple um, were uh, let know that the baby is going to be born and maybe uh, uh, lived for a few days because he's very ill. And they still didn't do abortion because they were also... Uh, uh, religious Christian Christians who uh, decided to go through this ordeal. Mm -hmm. They uh, let the baby be born. They bap baptized him, and then he died in a few hours. So that was their choice. Uh, although, um, granted, in that case, the health of the mother was not in danger, though. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so I'm, I'm done speaking. <laughs> sure, that's okay, Andre. Um, so, um, you, you, the, what I find that it boils down to is that people you feel who are, you know, deeply contemplating, you know, God and spiritual issues, um, when you, you, if you're revering life, then that should include to the unborn baby as you see it. And so that, that's, that's a really crux issue, uh, for you in that is that life in there and that you have to ad address that. Um, you do see that when there are two lives in the balance, such as the life of the mother is threatened by the actual uh, pregnancy, that is a very difficult situation because you really have two lives in the balance and how, how can you make that decision? It's very difficult. Um, and that you're looking at, um, you know, uh, 
uh, you know, that's, that's where you are and you're trying to really, oh, you mentioned also about a couple who was going to have a baby that was very ill and decided to bring the, um, the pregnancy to term and then to have the baby baptized and then it lived for a few hours, but you felt that it was very important for the, for the couple to have that baby. And you also mentioned that in that case, they could go through with the pregnancy because the mother's health was not threatened. So these are these issues, and what I feel underneath is these core issues of life, uh, a real respect for the sanctity of life, and trying to wrestle with it in this context. Okay, thank you. I, 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 I've been hurt. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay. Carolina, will you listen to me? Okay, I'm listening. Please make pauses, okay? Pause. Sure. Open, okay. Mm -hmm. Because yes. of my language ability. Okay. Which is better than mine. Um, so, um, okay. Well, my father, uh, who was just recently passed, is a doctor, and he worked in a hospital, and they're uh, Bellevue in New York City, and uh, and I'm old enough uh, to have been at least conscious uh, before abortion was allowed, and he would come home in tears many times um, because there was a whole ward of young girls who are dying because of botched abortions. I'll stop there. So you, uh, what I'm hearing, you recall your father mm -hmm. who recently passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, he was a doctor in a hospital, mm -hmm. as I understand, in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, he you recall him very often coming back home uh, oh. with tears because of what he experienced in the hospital. He, he, oh. uh, there was a ward with uh, uh, a lot of girls who were dying because of, as I understand, wrongly uh, done abortion. Is it, is yeah. it correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and uh, I never um, I've had, you know, women friends who have, you know, had abortions, who have decided not to have abortions. And um, it's just a really intensely personal, you know, issue um, that when I when I when I am somehow included in that personal process, I find myself completely in a, uh, not having an ability to really make a judgment. So I'll stop there for a second. Uh, so what I'm hearing you saying that you never mm -hmm. uh, have a friend or anybody who, who made this mm -hmm. decision of abortion, so, uh, and you mm -hmm. don't feel comfortable with making any judgment about such a decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, um, uh, yes, I'm sorry, that's correct. And then I also respect uh, the pro-lifers um, deep contemplation, respect of life. But I don't understand why they then go against uh, birth control and things like that. I'm, I, I'm not referring to Andre or anybody else here because we didn't talk about that. But what I, I agreed with President Clinton. He would like to make uh, abortion, you know, legal but rare. Um, there are certainly, you know, better ways to go about, uh, you, know, um, you know, population control, birth control. Than, than abortion. Abortion is, is like the last step in a tragedy, as I see it. I'll stop. Okay, so uh, you, what I'm hearing, uh, you want to kind of pay respect to people who, who choose to be pro-life mm -hmm. and uh, their attitude of um, Mm, appreciating uh, uh, mm -hmm. life and uh, 
and kind of um, their understanding of life. Uh, um, but you also prefer, uh, you can't agree with lack of any policy or uh, or mm, you have problem with kind of birth control policy that is in our in your country and you as i understand you like uh, the, the 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 proposal that president clinton gave mm. about some political uh, mm. solutions about uh, uh, birth control and kind of uh, um family or you know mm -hmm. parenting policy mm -hmm. is, is that correct yeah yeah close enough um and <laughs> uh yeah um and also just about the the laws uh and i'll I'll wrap up really quickly here um I have to push back on the shallowness. Georgia has a law that now that they're proposing where if a woman goes to another state that she and she gets an abortion comes back she would be uh uh prosecuted they're talking about life imprisonment for women uh things like that um i don't think um those are pretty profound things and they make a statement about i think misogynism which is the hatred of women in our country more than they do about uh abortion and that we could all do better if we just try to, you know, manage the problem realistically. Uh, you mentioned a group on the beginning, what you were saying, Sha, I mm -hmm. didn't hear that properly. Uh, you start with some groups in- uh, The word in shallowness. Oh, shallowness. No, uh, Andre had said that, 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 that considering these laws was somewhat shallow. And I got the point that you were talking about life and death issue, and I, I accept that point. But what I think that you know I'm pushing back on is that these laws affect death, and that's not shallow. Uh, well, I, I'm afraid my connection is not very good, oh, okay. but what I hear you have, uh, uh, you can't accept the, the law that uh, that uh, um, treat women who decide to go to the other to another state to make mm. abortion and they come back and they are imprisoned mm. and punished for what they did mm. and you kind as I understand you can't accept that uh, that type of politics uh, and uh, actions that are I don't know, executed in some of the states, as I understand. Right, right, right. Thank you, Karin. I okay. feel heard. Okay. Um, still not sure what the group you were talking about. Probably I would have to look for it. I know what uh, Google or let me no. let me clarify that. I think I think it's just a word in English, Carolina. The word yeah. shallow. It's right. like the, sha the shallow end of the swimming pool, you know, it's just not very deep. Okay. That's the word that was okay. okay. It's not a group. Okay. Yeah. I thought it's kind of it's particular group. Okay. Now I understand. Uh, so I have to choose. I choose you, Susan. Um, and um, well, Last month, when we were talking about the same topic, I probably tried to say most, well, I, I said probably most of what I wanted to say, and, but um, probably wasn't very clear. <laughs> it wasn't easy to understand what I mean. I will try to, to focus on some, just on some, uh, I choose some issues I would like to emphasize. So first thing is uh, that making any punishment or judgment on anybody in a situation when somebody can't make uh, first the other way. Um, 
I don't believe that abortion, choosing the abortion or, or keeping pregnancy uh, is, especially in some when there is uh, illness involved or very difficult uh, economic situation or, you know, cultural situation, whatever it is, I don't believe it can be easy choice in any situation, such a situation. It's always difficult, whatever woman chooses. That's the first thing I would like to say. Yes, yeah, so um, what you said, Carolina, is regardless of laws, just that making that choice, whether to keep a, to keep a pregnancy going or to end the pregnancy is a very difficult choice. Yeah, whatever woman chooses, and uh, and uh, the the circumstances women have to make this choice uh, are sometimes so horrible, and uh, the consequences, psychological uh, and sociological, how the, the 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 people close to them behave. Uh, how they feel in a you know social background wherever they are, and what they think about their choices and consequences of those choices, whatever they do, if they make abortion, if they make abortion or or do not uh, or keep baby, uh, it's enormous burden, enormous. Whatever happens, especially when the child is ill or the, the situation is very difficult and women decide to, to keep baby, it's, it's heroic. And when the woman decides opposite, uh, it also has its consequences, kind of psychological, mental, uh, emotional, very deep consequences. That's what I believe. So... As, as you're talking, you're, you're kind of feeling into the position of the mother and the consequences are profound for the mother either way. And, and actually it has ramifications, I think you said, for kind of like the, the subculture that she's in, family and, and her whole context. And so if yeah. the woman decides to keep the baby, for example, when it's already been determined that the baby's not going to be healthy. That's heroic. However, if she decides to terminate the pregnancy, that also has very difficult consequences often. So um, this is, this is the, the, the thing about this whole choice matter is it's never an easy choice. Mm -hmm. And another thing, uh, women whose pregnancy is an effect, a consequence of crime, I mean, the weight women are forced to do any kind of such a situation. And um, living in a situation when it doesn't look like raping, but it actually is raping, you know, forcing women to do. To, uh, to have sex with men whom we, we, what she doesn't want to, okay? Uh, because of any reasons. And uh, she become pregnant and the fact that she's pregnant with such an emotional distress, horrible distress, it's also uh, horrible for women. And in and wrapping up, uh, Forcing women by law in all such situations to any form, okay? Because I believe they might be women who, for example, were raped and want to keep baby, okay? Because for them it's kind of a surviving way, okay? They feel emotionally uh, kind of good with that. And forcing by women to make particular decision, either is uh, always keep pregnancy going or, 
or forcing women to to make abortion because you know uh, fetus is ill uh, whatever it is it's wrong it's deeply wrong we should give women uh, a good space cultural psychological and economical space to make this decision in peace and we don't do that we focus on on law and punishment so you mentioned the situation of of rape or if the pregnancy is uh you said the result of a crime but basically i, I think you meant rape there and um you said well sometimes the woman might want to keep the child but if the woman doesn't and and rape can also be uh you said um not not so clear cut it's just like she wasn't able to make the choice even to have the sex for whatever reason mm -hmm. got her pregnant so um it's it's a it's a very deep psychological pain and burden for the woman to be forced by law to keep this child to term did i hear you there yeah but the the the, the main point is uh, uh, that uh, instead of giving women space to make this decision in peace and comfort and safety uh, psychological and economical that's also important economical safety instead of giving this space to women to make this decision we focus on making law and judgment and punishment that's something that i can't accept i believe we should focus on on creating good uh, room good space for women in such situation that's what we should do so let me see if i got that now so um you believe that it's really important to give the woman safe psychological and even economic space to make this very difficult and important decision rather than having laws that force her into an action that she's really that isn't her real desire yeah thank you and you said thank it, you. it's actually so. wrong to to make that a legal issue yeah that's what i believe thank you i feel hurt thank you susan Okay, uh, I'll ask uh, Bill to be my listener. And when I think about this whole issue, pro-life, pro-choice, I always think it's the, the lesser of two evils, which, you know, making the choice. If, I, if I'm choosing to abort, that, that's, that's, again, like a, a lot of us have said, it's not an easy decision. Uh, it's not like uh, it's it's something that's casually done for for most women that I know. I've never known anybody who has used that as a method of birth control. Oh, I'll just go have an abortion. I think I you know I personally would judge that pretty harshly. And I personally, if I had an unwanted pregnancy, would not would not have an abortion. That's just my personal thing. But. I don't think the law should be uh, involved in this because I'm a person of privilege. I have the means to get help and I have a, you know, a, I'm a good functioning person, but a lot of people are, it's not gonna, it's not gonna go well if they keep the child. Uh, you need to unmute yourself. So, um, uh, so you would have uh, people who would just use abortion as a method of birth control very casually, you would have very harsh judgments on. And also, you mentioned that if you were pregnant, uh, whatever, you would personally choose not to have an abortion. But that contrasts very differently than the government getting in, in, involved and making that decision for women in general. Yes, and I, I, I always I think it's a tough choice. I feel I feel heard there. Mm -hmm. And um, when I said earlier, I want to elaborate on the uh, if somebody's forced to have a child, it's mm -hmm. not going to go well. I want to I want to speak from my own personal experience here, and a, a lot of personal experience. 
because I've, I've been a psychologist for 55 years, but the mm-hmm. first 15, 20 years, I worked very much in a community situation, almost like a social worker. And I worked very mm-hmm. closely with jails and welfare departments. And mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> there were a lot of people who were forced to keep I mean, because they didn't have the economic means and they didn't even have the Mm -hmm. intelligence. I mean, these were welfare mothers and then Mm -hmm. they just had been, you know, on that cycle of welfare for their whole lives. I mean, for generations. And um, and I watched some of these kids grow up and become prostitutes and drug addicts Mm -hmm. and live on the streets, live on the, um, uh, I mean, alcoholics. And I, I just saw that the the women who would have chosen and and i got to know a lot of these families and you know, i went into mm-hmm. their homes and, and saw that the, the women if they had a choice they would not have kept the child and they some of them at least knew they already had too many children uh an abusive husband if they even had one uh terrible circumstances for actually bringing up a healthy child. Okay. So you were uh, reflecting upon your own deep experience over 50 years being a psychologist and also for the first 15 years being more of a social worker and being involved and seeing the problem firsthand, especially among poor uh, families, uh, things like that, um, where there was a cycle of uh, impoverishment, both... uh, financially and also, you know, spiritually. And, um, you know, and, and they didn't even understand uh, the, you know, the ramifications of having a baby and, or uh, they, they sort of did, but they didn't know what options were open to them. And the situation was such that bringing another baby into those kind of dysfunctional uh, situations uh, was bad for everybody involved, just made it bad for the other children as well. Yeah, thank you. I feel heard there. And mm-hmm. um, it just seems to me that this abortion question is not just about mm-hmm. um, a, a, the ending of a fetus's life. It's mm-hmm. also about public health. And mm-hmm. I, I just, when I had all that experience working for the welfare department, I saw the tremendous cost uh, to society of unwanted children um, coming into the world. Mm-hmm. So um, that, that's just, that just the way, the way I'm looking at it is, uh, it's a lesser, uh, having an abortion is a lesser of two evils um, but sometimes it's necessary to protect the public health. Okay. So you're seeing this again, um, and not saying that abortion is, uh, is, is the best option for everything, but, um, but that's a public health issue. And the public health issue is that you bring in more and more unwanted children. You have more dysfunction, more uh, crime, and, and more despair. I feel fully heard. Thank you, Bill. Okay, sure. All right, I'll talk to Andre. So I understand it's my turn to speak? To listen. Then oh, you to speak, yeah. Oh, you're going to speak, and I'm going yeah. to listen. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay, great. All right. Um, well, I'm a retired special education teacher. Um, and so I, 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 I've just... I've seen some of these difficult situations, and, and, and this is a parallel. It's not about abortion, um, but it's about the difficulty that, that parents had. Um, the students that I taught um, were um, very, very disturbed. They had significant problems. Either they were coming out of a hospital or they were about to go into a hospital. I'll stop there, okay? I'll let you reflect. Oh, sure. Uh, so you're saying that you are actually an uh, educator. Mm-hmm. You, um, you experienced uh, a lot of controversial situations with uh, young mm-hmm. people who come out of the situation being very disturbed and, um, um, mm-hmm. I guess, hard to deal with. Mm-hmm. Right. And, 
and, and the, the kind of heartache, uh, again, um, and this is not specifically about abortion, but I had one student who was uh, pretty wild, um, and he was in a, a, a family, and uh, they were driving, and he grabbed the wheel away from his mother, putting the whole family in jeopardy. And um, so, uh, and then the mother had, then the parents had to make a decision about, yes, his kid was part of the family, but uh, he threatened the life of the rest of the family. And um, so these are the, some of the difficult situations that I've seen. I'll stop there. Okay, so uh, I heard that you uh, experienced um, um, extraordinary, actually you didn't experience, mm -hmm. you heard of the extraordinary situations when a mm -hmm. child uh, will behave in such way that it will uh, put in jeopardy uh, the rest of the family mm -hmm. uh, by his um, actions. Correct, yes. And, um, and so that's why I, I, you know, really resonate with what Carolina said about having a safe container or supportive area for people to make these difficult decisions um, because there are no easy answers sometimes. I'll stop there. And so that's why you're agreeing uh, on the point that uh, people have to be uh, given freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. uh, um, to make the decisions whatever they think uh, is appropriate. Correct, but I, and the one little nuance there is not only that, but being supported. So in other words, you actually might reduce abortions if a young woman who was facing that knew she had childcare, education, um, you know, that she could make a living wage and things like that, that, that sort of thing would support a reduction and certainly would be what I would consider the right way to uh, reduce abortions. And I'll stop there. Okay, so you, you see the role of the society, as I introduced you, in providing sure. certain... certain um, certain uh, care to people mm -hmm. so they can uh, make a right decision. I have difficulty uh, linking actually uh, what you're saying with the issue, but I'm just reiterating what I hear, how I understood you. That, that's fine, Andrea. I really appreciate that. You're, you're doing fine. And, 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 and certainly. So I feel fully heard. And now it's your turn to speak and then elaborate. So, and as a facilitator, I just want to say that sometimes people, Andre, sometimes people go way off the topic. <laughs> it's, it's our job as listener just right. to listen. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I, just, I understood, just I understood. That. I understand yeah. the notion and the reasons, and I do the same quite frequently. <laughs> so I, just, I just want to convey that I got a little bit confused uh, how this relates because what I what I feel after listening. Oh, did you, you pick a, a listener? Oh, I'm sorry. I pick you, Susan. Yeah, okay. I pick you, Susan. Yeah, thank you. So as I as I hear all those uh, different points, uh, it's very interesting, and I um, I think what's going on is uh, in minds of people when people are trying to uh, come up with a proper attitude towards this controversial topic is that uh, inevitably we all uh, wind up in discussing the government, a legal issue, how, how this um, not personal but official power can be applied and or, and or control the, everything that is associated. And this is where the problem is, in my view, because from that perspective, I fully agree that um, uh, these powers, government or state officials or judges, what have you, they cannot produce uh, objective, healthy, 
uh, right decisions or controls. It's impossible because the uh, government cannot do that. By the same token, if the uh, allowance of the abortion is officially supported, it creates a caveat. So it's really a difficult thing to, con to uh, delegate or to balance. It's probably impossible. So these arguments, these dialogues about this issue, uh, unfortunately, inevitably gets to that point legally. Do we uh, have to enforce, prohibit, or allow? And there's no answer. There's absolutely no answer in my view. Let me see if I got that much, uh, Andre. So uh, you feel it's very unfortunate uh, that when this discussion comes up, it basically becomes a legal issue and you see it as uh, something that the, the laws and the government cannot adequately make a decision about because it's quite complicated. And yet you also say that if the government does um, allow abortion and have that be legal, then that, that's, that, that, that's not so great either. You right. use the word as a caveat. Yeah. So um, this whole thing, having it be focused on the, the legal thing, it's impossible to resolve. Yes, uh, yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Uh, so I'm thinking that the only good thing that comes out of those debates, conversations, or exchanges of the ideas um, is to uh, discuss or to educate maybe, or to bring the point of understanding of what's, what is at stake. And at stake is a, a paradigm of a person who considers to make the choice. And we absolutely, none of us can really change another person. We can only influence, we can provide arguments. We can um, talk about several things by changing the um, criteria that person may hear some arguments and start thinking, wait a minute, what are we talking about? There are different people here. There are, there are mothers who trash the newborn uh, infants into the trash cans. They put them in the trash can cans. We know statistically it's not just a single occurrence. It's uh, incredible. So people come to the state of um, uh, stopping being, and uh, people, a lot of people unfortunately turn into the um, animalistic kind of state. They lose their humanity by doing these things. Can government control it to a degree? I think yes. But um, um, the, dis to discuss whether government should or can impose its rules as abortion is concerned, I think it's absolutely impossible. So let me see if I got that. Yeah. Um, so you would advocate more discussion and education about the ramifications of the various actions so that someone who does get uh, an unwanted pregnancy gets to hear from other people who can flesh out their own personal paradigm and maybe broaden out what they see as their options or uh, check with their own values, that sort of thing. They, if, if people can influence each other through discussion and education, maybe better decisions will be made by the individuals. But yes. then, then you said, well, but sometimes maybe government does need to get involved, but uh, that's a very unfortunate thing. And, and, and then just some, somewhere in there you mentioned that it actually does happen quite often that uh, a woman who hasn't had any education or real reflection on her choice uh, may just trash, you know, throw the baby in the trash can or do something 
uh, that uh, simply just uh, kills the fetus after, I mean, kills the baby after they're born. Right. Uh, I just want to add, do I have some more time or not? Yeah, take a, a short amount of time. Yeah, okay, great. So I, I just like to add another thing. Uh, I hope I can squeeze it in in, in one minute or so. Uh, that um, a lot of times in, during uh, this conversation also I heard uh, the uh, notion that um, there are circumstances when that can be used to justify termination of the abortion that can be social, economic, or any other kind of um, uh, reasons in that realm. And um, I think that's, that's a wrong uh, view because in this, if, if discourse is being conducted under those presumptions, that completely neglects the, again, the most important thing that the life, life of the, uh, a, a man is, is, is sacred thing. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not something that just happens. It's hard for us to understand sometimes why a woman conceives being, uh, raped. She didn't want it. She was uh, forced, and that's a great argument, absolutely great argument. However, um, I personally, and people like me, we do believe that we don't understand everything, why things happen. We don't understand why innocent people uh, perish, die, being killed, and other catastrophes happen. We don't know the reason. We only have a very limited view. And, but we are still uh, prone to justify whatever we exposed to. And that's a dilemma. It's a difficult thing. But the people who don't believe in, um, in, uh, in God, <laughs> they, uh, they're lost. They, they uh, use the judgmental tools that they have, their intellectual abilities, but, and they think that they see the reason for things. They also believe in justice on this earth, that justice can be achieved by, uh, uh, by voting for right representative of powers, by uh, pushing some political agenda and so forth. Okay, I'm, I'm almost done. Okay. So basically my concept was conveyed. Uh, I think that this shift towards, um, uh, away from main thing that life is something, it's a miracle. Life is a miracle. It's absolutely a miracle because science have no idea what life is. They cannot even come close based on the current information available for us, how life occurs. So Thank please reflect. Thank you. So uh, you're saying that a lot of times human beings, we get uh, sort of arrogant and we think we know God's will and um, life is sacred and the um, mystery of life is something science can't understand and certainly the legal system was very long way from being able to uh, account for all the complexities even though you do say that yes yeah, sometimes there are circumstances where um, it, it, it might be a better thing in some way for um, the woman to not know not be penalized for carrying a child to term that is not something that man, man can um dictate what you know what the consequences should be so um you believe life is a life is a mystery and it's sacred and uh we have no we humans have no business uh thinking that we should be able to um say this is right and this is wrong and we know what justice is that 
it, it, we, we don't have that understanding, that deep understanding of the mystery of life. And so um, that's, that's basically your position is we need to respect uh, what we don't understand instead of uh, acting like we do. Yeah, uh, yes, I, I, I've been heard. Thank you. Okay, I will uh, choose Carolina to be my listener. Okay. So, um, as I'm listening to all of these comments, I'm really uh, wishing for a system, a, a uh, human governance and leadership uh, and social system where there's a lot more social support for families in need, a lot more education about um, sex, first, first off, is the addictive nature of sex, okay, the compulsive nature of sex. Um, my mother taught me a lot about how to protect myself around predators, but I don't think public education is doing that for people. So um, what I'm hearing you saying that when you're listening to all the, co all the commentaries we do during this circle, uh, mm, you thinking about uh, general state policy uh, and the uh, first step is kind of uh, um, uh, sexual education, as I understand. Is it correct? Yeah. Do you yeah. hear me? Yeah, yes, I hear you and I feel heard. So, um, and I have done, actually, I've worked in public schools and I, unfortunately, I know how hard it is to get new programs in, uh, and uh, uh, especially anything that would educate people about, about how to use their own sexuality responsibly, but that, that's just where I'm landing right now. But um, I'll, 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 I'll just say that uh, the bureaucracy in uh, American institutions, it, it, it is so difficult to get enlightened social programs uh, passed. Uh, so, what I'm hearing you saying that uh, as a psychologist, uh, you work in the schools and you see, um, well, the sexual education is a, a, a great issue and because it's, a, a, well, you said that before, it's a great part of our life, how we uh, uh, how we kind of govern our sexual life and the education in that uh, topic is mostly more bureaucracy than, uh, than a real action that helps young people to kind of be aware of their sexuality and being responsible for their sexuality, as I understand. That's right. Thank you. And... Um... So then I go to, well, if, um, if the educational system isn't the best leverage point, because I, I am interested in social change for um, creating a world that supports the less fortunate people who don't, who don't have resources and, and, and good education. So then I look at the next leverage point, which would be <clears throat> something like, the family education and the parent education that I got involved in during the late 60s when LBJ, one of our presidents, <clears throat> President Johnson, had this thing called the Office of Economic Opportunity. So I'll just say that much and then I'll, I'll tell you what, what happened then once you repeat that. So, uh, so, well, there are a few things you said right now. Uh, um, so, um, first, uh, uh, you think that uh, another issue, uh, I, 
I hope I remember everything. So first thing is uh, the the um, another issue is kind of parenting policy and uh, the 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 uh, the economic problem. You didn't use this word, but that's how I understand you. Uh, uh, that uh, not every uh, not all the people have good w sources to to keep child and to, to, to raise the child. So it's kind of problem. And uh, you know, mentioned uh, President Johnson in the uh, 60s and his program or policy. Uh, can you? Is that, I'm not personally, on it. Is, that, is that the five minutes? Bill? Yeah, about the soft okay. five, so, sure. Um, yeah, I'll just say, I'll just say, um, Basically, you heard me. I was talking about policies that edu that are educational uh, rather than legalistic. Uh, so, as I understand, policy that, and program by Johnson, President Johnson, was more focused on education than about uh legal issues as i understand is it correct yes i feel heard carolina okay okay thank you okay so i will try to talk to andra i hope i will hear you correctly because i have horrible problem with connections today uh, okay. andra, can... do you hear andra? me i hear you well yeah Okay, okay. <coughs> sorry. Um, I'm sorry, I don't speak English very well, so I'm sorry if I do mistakes, you know, <laughs> I still learn. Um, okay. Um, first, about women who leave the dead kid in a trash can. Alive. I believe or alive, okay. Uh, in both situations, uh, it's, it's a tragic. Uh, I, do, I don't think about those women as a women who lost their humanity. Well, maybe they kind of switch off the humanity in their, in their soul, in their heart doing that but they are deeply harmed by what they did. And I can't think in kind of uh, punishment terms about what they did. I rather would like to see what happened in their life that they made, su made such a decision. That's what I would like to focus. I can't accept this kind of judging, uh, uh, attitude we mostly show when we hear in TV or wherever uh, that uh, there was another child find on the street or in a trash can. We always judge this woman. We never think what happened to her. And I don't believe, even if she tried to kind of emotionally deny what she did, I don't believe it doesn't hurt her. I don't believe okay. that. If I may, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I'm hearing you saying that um, that when we are faced with atrocities like this, when um, women throw their babies into the trash can or do some other terrible things in general, we we immediately start judging the person for his atrocious acts. And uh, I appreciate the, you saying that we miss analysis on what caused that person to become what she or he is at that point when a person, women in that example, perform such terrible things. Did I hear you correctly? Uh, yes. Uh what is important to me, we do not care about this woman, this, this woman. Uh, we kind of focus on uh, 
legal issue what Susan said before. I would prefer to focus on taking care about those women. That's okay. what is important to me because I believe those women are deeply hard, uh, uh, kind of psychologically, emotionally. They need help, but they don't have support doing such things. Uh, they might be even psychopath, but still, uh, uh, they are kind of people who who need support and care, and they never probably face care, so they make such horrible decisions. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that you. Um, you're saying that this women or persons who perform atrocious acts being neglected by our judgmental attitude towards them and there's no empathy or sympathy to them yeah. in terms of uh, looking what actually made them do these things and we by continuing yeah. Uh, expressing our um, uh, anger or whatever we have as a reaction to their actions are not doing right things, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. thank you. And um, another thing that bothers me, uh, I am kind of, uh, how to say that, I'm agnostic, uh, but I'm also atheist and believers, but I'm kind of agnostic atheist. And, um, but I spend most of my life among Catholics, very deeply deep believers, which is not very um, often situation here in Poland because we are mostly kind of more uh, into religious customs than deep faith people. It's kind of custom religion more than uh, than um, than real faith. But there are people who are deeply engaged in faith, and I always have a lot of friends who are engaged. Actually, were Catholic atheists, and um, so I know this social background quite well. But uh, what happens here in Poland? Uh, uh, I can't understand why um, uh, very strict, uh, uh, very strict uh, anti-choice uh, politics mm -hmm. is connected with lack of any sexual education. That's what happens here in Poland. Uh, our government is trying to to push. Uh, uh, full uh, um, uh, I don't know how to say that uh, prescription of abortion uh, I don't know if it's a good word uh, uh, but you know uh, the, it's still possible in some very rare cases but there is no sexual education what Susan was talking about and really uh, it's kind of crazy thing for me because we the, the the law punish people but doesn't give them uh, awareness of what they're doing and it's i can't understand because it's deeply connected to kind of catholic uh, uh model of life okay uh, okay i see that. Left. so you you were saying that you are um agnostic you don't belong to any um you were like basically atheist uh, or agnosticism is not atheism, it's different, but it's different discussion. Um, basically, ag agnosticism is a statement that I don't know. <laughs> yeah, not... that's what I meant. <laughs> I know. Right. So I don't know, but I choose be not believe. That's yes, what I'm I saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you also mentioned that uh, being um, born and living in Poland, which is predominantly Catholic country, you are exposed continuously to the uh, um, uh, to the um, uh, if if I may use the term Pharisees in church 
of people who live by rules, by word, not by the spirit of the law, but by the word of yeah. the law. And that creates um, a very wrong attitude to which I agree um, because um, it's really um, uh, disconnects you from the issue and disconnects those people from the real understanding of what's going on. They want to apply a rule, a moral rule, how other people should uh, conduct the live, et cetera, et cetera. And also um, yeah. you see that you agree with the point that those people who represent those powers or those movements, they completely neglect uh, the um, educational part of how they can help people to make right decisions. Well, the only thing they do is judge those people. Did I understand you correctly? Did I? Well, uh, yes, you are close. But what is important to me that uh, they do two things. One thing is kind of neglecting edu sexual education or and the other thing is kind of trying to 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 may uh, to pass by our parliament few times during last three years few times they tr the the ruling coalition is trying to pass the law that restrict abortion completely and you know it's kind of what's the point what's the logic in this uh, and they very often do that in the name of the Catholic religion. And it's kind of crazy for me, obviously. Uh, what's the point to, to, on the one side, to, uh, to restrict completely uh, uh, abortion, and on the other side, not giving people a real awareness of their sexuality and being safe? Uh, that's the point, that the two kind of uh, things that one deny the other. So it's, it's crazy for me. That's what I meant. Okay, so uh, let me reiterate the last part. You also see that there's a big contradiction or um, yeah, contradiction. no balance, no harmony between imposing rules and not helping people not to break those rules in a nutshell by educating them yeah. but how yeah. they can help him not to do things that they want to forbid right yeah you can say that yeah thank you thank you i feel hurt thank you okay contradiction was good word <laughs> i forgot in this word contradiction because to to yeah thank you okay um so i i will choose you is my listener then, if it's my turn? Okay. 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 So, um, yeah, um, what I want to say is that after hearing all these things that, that you uh, mentioned, is that I want to go back to our limitation of understanding uh, not just God's will, but um also trying to find the right basis for making decisions for uh continuing uh development of my own understanding of each each of us understanding of life and um making uh conclusions Okay, let me try, okay? okay. Um, so, if I understand you correctly, you're saying that uh, you kind of, you want to kind of uh, shift our dialogue today from talking about social issue to more kind of personal insight. Uh, and you, you're talking about our limited ability to understand the what i would say a miracle of life what what is it and our understanding of it is limited so we should uh, act carefully in that area as i understand yes to the degree i didn't mention carefulness though i just wanted uh, to uh, not to take away from the topic no i just want to 
give different perspectives. So maybe it can yeah. enrich uh, thinking process, not to be just, you know, discussing the... Uh, the uh, yeah, so you <laughs> make correction that uh, uh, what I said is sound like mm, I'm, I'm thinking that you're changing the topic and you just wanted to more kind of put more uh, um, attention to to the thinking process to 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 kind of our uh, yeah different, our perspective. different perspective different perspective uh, okay uh, different perspective and i'd like to uh mention this example uh this well-known fact that uh in the year zero uh, there were 14,000 babies killed in Bethlehem when King Irit heard that a new king of Jews was born. He ordered, as we all know, like in the, from the gospel, that all the uh, infants from year, uh, being uh, two year old and, uh, and less were killed. So statistically, it's well-known fact that 14,000 babies were killed. And, so uh, let, me re let me reflect, small pieces, please. <laughs> For me, it's difficult, okay? Uh, so now you, refer, you are referring to, to the biblical time and to the beginning of our era uh, when there was this uh, biblical atrocity of killing babies because of um, uh, this, uh, uh, how to say that, okay. um, I was told that there will be a baby. So, so there was this decision of killing all the babies from up to two years or something like that. And there was a huge atrocity. Uh, that's what you, you mean. Yeah, yeah. I mentioned this episode to bring up the uh, the uh, the issue of uh, us understanding, and it's a very common question that people who are agnostic or not believers, or even Christians, uh, among Christians, the same question uh, uh, is being asked: If there is God, how could He allow that to happen? Okay, so. And now you, you you make again this the question that many people ask, uh, uh, both Christians, uh, religious people, people of faith, or agnostic or atheist. Uh, how it is possible that God let such atrocities to happen? Yes. Is it cool? Yeah, mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. Yes. And um, uh, so the reason I'm mentioning this is that because uh, our most of the people's paradigms are do live within the circle or a square of this life, this life, and within this realm. There's no logic, indeed, that can explain or answer this question. It cannot so be answered I... because it's, it's a great contradiction. The God, if, 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 if I'm sorry, let me finish my thoughts. Uh, or unless you want to uh, interrupt me, it's okay. Yeah, it's a, well, I just want to try to, 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 to reflect that, that okay. what you're saying, that, that we live in kind of, very limited uh, um, you use frame as I understand or realm uh, well. of life and it kind of limits our ability to understand what's happening to us however we think if we are religious or non-religious people, it limits our ability to understand what happens to correct, us. Correct. What I'm getting at is that the idea of justice that all of us have, the concept of justice, 
everyone has it. And the striving to achieve one is part of this conversation as well, right? Uh, however, uh, we, we don't remember that fact that we were very limited in our understanding in this frame. Without getting out of this frame, uh, we cannot understand things. It also, we can dwell on the, on the theory of uh, um, German mathematics, who also, I forgot his last name, uh, Gadel, I think, Gadel. He, he, he actually explained mathematically, proved that none of the system can prove its perfection within itself. You have to go out. So the same thing is here, applicable to this okay. issue. Okay, let me reflect because it's, <laughs> it's difficult. You're talking about very subtle things. Um, so we stay without this frame, so to speak, frame of our life that limits our ability to understand, but we also have kind of sense of justice and we, are, we tend to be gen, gen, mental, uh, judgmental and it's kind of a contradiction, using your words, uh, being judgmental in such limited uh, circumstances we stay in. And you recall the German mathematician who said that we can't uh, uh, prove um, understanding, uh, prove uh, perfectness of uh, specific uh, um how do we say that phenomenon idea. or situation i'm sorry uh, idea i'm helping with the word uh idea okay yeah, the staying idea. inside we're staying inside right. in it we have yeah. to get out the problem is as i understand we can't really get out of frame we live in no, no the this, this is misunderstanding. I didn't, okay. <laughs> there are two things I disagree with your understanding. First of all, I didn't mention contradiction. It's not a contradiction. And I also okay. didn't mean that we cannot, cannot get out of the system. We okay. can. We can, okay. but it requires, uh, it requires certain ingredients for us to do that. So, um, in order to so correcting, so let me correct myself. <laughs> okay. So there is this frame of our life that limits our ability to understand what we can get outside to kind of uh, um, make better understanding of who we are and what's happened to us. Is it right. correct? We cannot have. Uh more complete understanding, not complete, because complete understanding okay. is inachievable um, by, the na by, by the nature. So, but we can grow to enhance our understanding uh, if we get out of this realm. And this realm, let me make it simple. It's from the moment when we uh, are born and our consciousness uh, becomes uh, available to us and until the moment when we die. This is this frame. Within this frame, uh, there is no justice, there is no meaning. There is no meaning of life, if it is what it is. If our life is this period of time when we exist, it, we cannot answer a lot of questions because it's all meaningless. Our existence has no meaning. It's just a bubble that occurs and then it disappears. So striving to uh, find a meaning without... Uh, without accepting the idea that this is not what it is. There's something else. There's something else beside moment of birth and moment of death. Within, with, okay. with, that, with this... Let me... Okay. <laughs> so, okay. what I understand, I this time, frame right? of... Okay, so this frame you mentioned uh, is kind of so to speak, our life from the moment of birth when we got and develop our consciousness to the moment of our death. And within it, we can't really, the, there is no meaning, there is no sense until we start to think that has to be something else behind that. Correct. Is it correct? Yeah, I've been hurt. 
Well, try to, to. I feel you didn't end your your idea. There is something well, uh, else you want. Time is limited, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would like to finish the example with uh, four thousand babies. Go ahead, Andre. We oh, can thank you so time. much. Thank you very much. So, uh, yeah, it's it's complicated. That probably takes a little more than five minutes. I guess <laughs> for you, a little more profound than five minutes conversation. But just to finish my point, to. Uh, to understand, not to understand, or to start uh, kind of trying to comprehend why, what could be the, this allowance of this atrocity of murdering, murdering, not just killing, um, uh, because it's different thing. Killing and murdering is different thing, you know? The executioner kills and criminal murders, that's different. Uh, so that's a topic of different topic, you know, like capital punishment. So we're not going to talk about it, but we may. Anyway, so to talk about this, uh, to finish the, my, my point with babies, 14,000, the only um, possible starting point of understand it, uh, understanding it, why, did it, why God, if he exists, and I believe he exists, allowed that, is... To believe that the end of life of a person, of living person, is not the end of his or her existence. That's, that's when the understanding can start. Because all those innocent babies achieved a perfect existence after their physical death. Because they were not guilty of any wrongdoings. They were cl clear, innocent. And they achieved okay. existence that is absolutely perfect. However, if those children were live their own uh, regular lives, as we all do, and they could become bad people, you know? They could become something that you know those people who trash their babies whatever killers murderers whatever they did not so if we reject the idea of life after death if you will we cannot justify it but if we accept that and it's not made up idea this is a revelation from god through jesus christ who told us that this is the goal of our life, to achieve a perfect existence upon reaching the point of death of our, our uh, condition that we're in right now. So that's, that's okay, the, we, okay. Thank you. Uh, it's a <laughs> lot, so I would, I would try to reflect. Okay. Um, so, uh, um, Let's leave aside the, the, the issue with murder and killing. But uh, as I understand you, getting out of this frame we were talking about is uh, you saying that it's a belief in life after death. That's what give us, uh, you use word uh, comprehension, comprehension. Uh, uh, and deeper understanding of what happens to us, uh, and and uh, uh, without the, this belief that there is something outside behind this frame, we can't really understand or comprehend what happens to us. Is it correct? Yes. It yeah, was, yeah. I've been hurt. Very. Okay, thank you. And <clears throat> it's now time for this little subgroup to come to a close so we can back join the big group. Are we okay with that? Yeah. Is this okay? I'm okay, except I need to have a very short bio break. Uh, let's do that. Have our bio breaks, anybody who needs it, but uh, we'll all be here when you get back, Andre. Thank you so much. I'll be right back.